Hi there, Blaze here, and in today's tutorial we're gonna install Firebase in our Unity project. We will do this step by step from creating a new project in Firebase console to install one of the modules in our Unity project. We will go with Firebase Firestore cloud storage, which can be used to preserve our saves from our games in Unity. Uh, we can save the game to the cloud and load it from the cloud. There are also many other Firebase functions in other modules, and I will probably create a few more tutorials about other ones so go and subscribe the channel to not miss future videos okay so we will start with creating a new project you need to create a firebase account if you use google account on your android device or you use gmail you probably have a google account you can just go to the console.firebase.google.com and you should see something like this i have one of the projects here this is my mobile project and we will create a new project so let's click add project enter your project name and we will go with Firebase tutorial and this is a unique identifier for our project. We can change this but I think that this will be okay. So let's go with this, click continue. We can enable Google Analytics for this project. I want to use Google Analytics in the future or in the another tutorials so I keep this enabled but it's up to you. Let's continue, select an account on Google Analytics. I will check my Google account here and this will automatically create a new property in this account so we can check this in the analytics page later. Okay so let's create the project. This can take a while so we need to wait okay our project is ready so we can click continue this will open this page get started by adding firebase to your application and we have some options here as you can see apple android web unity and flutter and what we need to do is click on unity then we need to check if we want to use this app for android or ios or both of them so i will check the android app because i want to keep this tutorial simple so i will go only with android but you can also go with ios app and i need to write android package name here and to obtain it, we need to go to Unity. We need to go to build settings. And here we have player settings. Let's move to the Android section, go here. As you can see, we have com default company Firebase tutorial. I can change this by changing company name and product name. I will change the company name to Blaze Dev. Changed automatically here, but I can also change the domain. I want to change the domain com. I will change this to games and the blaze dev because this is my domain when you go to the blazedev.games website you will see my website so i want to keep my domain here games that blaze dev that firebase tutorial okay we can copy this we need to save this also of course so let's save the project and i will put this package name here app nickname optional i will not fill this but you can write the name of the application here register an app and now the firebase generated the config file we need to download this file we need to go to unity assets and put this google Google services in assets folder. You can put it in the root asset folder or you can create a folder, name it Firebase for example, and move Google services here. But I will put it in the root folder so I can easily find it in the future. Okay, now we need to go next here and we need to download the Firebase Unity SDK. And this is really huge file. It, it's about one gigabyte. So I downloaded it earlier and I have it extracted here. As you can see, we have many Unity packages here. So we go with next here and continue to console. Okay. Okay, so we have plenty of packages here. You can install only these packages you want to use. We want to use Firebase Firestore. So this is the Unity package I want to use. Double click it and it will open in Unity in the current project. We need to import all that stuff. Just import it. This can take a while. Okay, and I'm gonna switch this project to the Android target. So I can use the external dependency manager properly to the Android platform. After switching to the Android target, you get this window with information to enable Android Auto Resolution and I think that this is good so we can enable it. Then dependency manager need to resolve Android dependencies so this can take a while because this need to download some files to your project. Okay, done. So switch back to the Firebase console, go to Firestore database. If you don't see it here, you can go to build Firestore database and create database. You should start in test mode because this will allow you to write and read from every device, no matter what happens. You should use production mode, but you will need to specify the security rules. So let's start in test mode, go next. Here you can choose the location. I will choose the Europe because I live in Europe, so this will be better for me. Enable. Okay, and we have our database created. So let's Let's minimize this and here is our simple scene we have two buttons here save to cloud and load from cloud so i created URL save data and save system let's create a new object call it save system and i will add the save system component here now when i open this file i have save system and i want to add two public methods public void save to cloud and public void load from cloud 
Okay, let's save this and go back to the Unity. And in the save button, we can add in the onclick function reference to our save system and check save system, save to cloud. And similar in the load, we need to check save system, but now we'll go with load from cloud. Okay, we can save this. We have a simple save data class and I have string here, int and float, username health and difficulty modifier. I want to push these three values to our cloud storage. We can easily manage this data using attributes. This is the easiest way to save and load the data from the Firestore. So let's type Firestore data to the class. We need to use Firebase Firestore, of course. And now we need to create Firebase properties. And to use it, we need to create public properties for these fields and we want to upload to the cloud. So we need to create public string username property and get will be used to get the username and set for setting, of course. So username equals value. And now we need to add the attribute Firestore property. We need to do the same thing to two more variables in this class. Okay, so we can save this and now go to the save system. And in save to cloud, we need to create new field of type Firebase Firestore and let's call it Firestore. We need to use firebase.firestore. We should also initialize this and we can do this in the awake function, for example. Firestore should equal to Firebase Firestore that default instance. And now to save this to the cloud, we need to use this Firestore variable that document. We need to specify the path, so I will type save data. And then I need to use something to identify this save. I will start with just zero and I will show you how this will work uh, later when we upload this to the cloud. Let's then write dot set async and we need to specify what we want to save. We will go with save data. But first, we need to create the instance of the save data. So let's create save data variable here and assign the new save data. We can use this uh, short new form and set async save data. Okay, let's save this and go to the Unity. Let's start the game. Okay, so we have our application started. Let's click Save to Cloud and switch to the Firebase console. We will check if something happened. You need to refresh this page. And now you have a collection, Save Data, Document 0 and Fields, Difficulty Modifier Health and the Username, just like we have this in the Save Data here. So let's go back to the path. Here you have Save Data slash 0. So this Save Data, this thing before this slash, is a collection name. I like to name my collections similarly to the class they represent. So I have class save data and I name this collection save data, but written in the other format. If, for example, I will have another class, let's simply write this here, but this is not a good practice. So if I will have, for example, scoreboard data, and this will be another Firestore data, and this will have some other properties, I will probably name this scoreboard data, so this will be similar to, to this class. But this is only an example and you can name it whatever you want. More important is what is after the slash, because this is the identifier of the document. I write here zero, but what you should put here is something what will identify the user, because you probably want to have multiple documents in the Firestore, and each of these documents will probably represent the save data for another user. So for example, this can be save data username. Of course, you need to check if this username is unique. You. you need to check if many users don't use the same username. So the best identifier will probably alphanumeric identifier you will create when the user register into your game. I want to keep this tutorial simple, so I will remove this and save this just with zero. Okay, so now we want to load from cloud and I will load variables from the Firebase. So I can remove these default values for this field, so we will be sure that I will not use these values, but values from the cloud. I will just write these values to the console. Okay, so let's start with calling our Firestore document, and we need to specify the path to the documents. As you can see, I use the save data and the new document identifier. When you use identifier here, instead of zero, you will need to specify the same identifier you use here in the save. So if you use something like the user ID, you need to store this user ID somewhere on the device so you can then use it here when loading data from cloud. But to simplify this tutorial, I will go with null. And then we need to use get snapshot async, and this will return the snapshot. So we want to save this to the variable. 
and this will return the snapshot so we want to proceed with this we can use continue with then we need to push the task to our new function inside this function and we need to check if this document exists so we will write the if statement and check if task that result this will return the document snapshot exists and if yes we can try to convert it to the save data so far data task result convert to and we need to specify the type of our class to this data so this will be save data and we can now write this data to the console so i will use debug log here and just write all the values from the class just like this okay so let's save this and go back to the unity now when we play this game we need to click on the load from cloud and what we get is username turbo maximus oh i have some bad formatting here but you see username turbo maximus health 100 and difficulty modifier 1.3 let's fix this formatting i need to add spaces here save this now go to the firestore console okay let's modify this zero a little so let's for example change the username from Turbo Maximus to Maxi Turbimus. Update this. And now, when you go to the Unity and click Load from Cloud, you have username Maxi Turbimus Health 100 and difficulty modifier 1.3. And that means that we load the data from the cloud. Okay, one more thing is that this function and this function are async. And what you need to do is when getting this function with async, you need to specify the continue with, or you can use this uh, like a task. So, for example, you can use await and then you will not use this continue with task you will do this with assigning a value here and this will be not the task this will be the snapshot so the task result is a snapshot and here also but if you use await you need to specify this function as async let's click play and now when you log from cloud you will also get these values so it's up to you how you want to use it with async await or maybe with continue with and the same thing with set async you can make this with await and with async this will force your program to await for this function to end and then the rest of code will be executed if you will not use this async await and you will call this set async operations will be done in the background and the rest of your code will be executed before this set async ends so you need to specify how you want to handle this you can also add something like a progress bar or information that that your save data is uploaded or loaded from or to the cloud and that's probably all on using firestore with your save data Hope this video helps. If you like it, hit that thumbs up. Let me know. If you have any problems, I will reply in the comments. See you soon in the another video. Bye.